in order to make this chart visible on front end. So what we did in uh, to enable that chart on front end. So basically in, in Fury Elements template or in application. So we, we have to open manifest.json file and within that manifest.json file that is inside the component, we have to add this qualifier. OK, and then whatever the qualifier we maintain. So for example, in presentation variant. So for this chart, we have maintained a qualifier as a default. So this same qualifier value, we will add it inside the manifest. OK, default. So based on that, your default chart will be visible on this on the screen or uh, in that analytical list page app. OK, so that is a default chart. So apart from this default chart, there is a one more concept of visual filters because when we look at the floor plan. Uh, when we look at the floor plan of one second, this floor plan. Oh, yeah. Yeah, when we look at the floor plan of this ALP, so you can see like this middle section is complete. Like this main content has a as a two things. One is the chart and second one is the table. So on top of that, we will move to this visual filters part. So basically in visual filters, like only three types of uh, charts we can create. One is the bar chart, second one is the line chart, and third one is the donut. OK, so only these three different charts are possible to create in the visual filters. So basically, what are the visual filters? So visual filters are nothing but it is a part of your compact filter only. Compact filter means you might have seen in list report app. So we have created a filters in the header part and how that filters are created using the selection field. Once we add the annotation selection field, so based on that, your uh, filters will be created on the top. So whatever the filters we created, so that filters and this visual filters. So basically this visual filter, it is a part of that compact filters. OK, it is a sub part of that. And then what is the purpose of visual filters? The as this is an analytical list page. So basically this app will give the high level overview of sales data in this case because now we are working on the sales details. So in this case, whatever the sales order are there, so all that information will be will be provided with with the help of this ALP application. So for example, when we look at this visual filters, so let's say this is a table and then within this table, if you want to filter out based on customer like and then what you can do this filters basically this visual filters are nothing but it is it is an interactive filter interactive filter means like you can click on any bar and based on that your table as well as your uh, uh, sorry your chart and as well as your table both uh, the, all the data will be filtered out and how that is possible it is possible based on visual filters so this filters are all interactive means like if you want to see like what, what is a drawback and then what happened, you want to find out the root cause. So this visual filters will help you to identify that. How? Because you can directly click on that part and then based on that the filter values or filter parameters will be passed so that you can see the proper data or details in this uh, chart as well as the table. OK, so basically in, in ALT application, visual filters are very important. OK, it is like a measure based filtering. Whatever the filtering you do, it is totally based on measures. OK. So as I said, like it is a subset of it is always would be the subset of compact filters, compact filters. But uh, see the best UX guideline, what SAP is saying that you should always go with visual filters rather than compact filters. OK, but still they have provided one option on the top right. You can toggle from compact filters and visual filters. That is possible. OK, but ALP's UX guideline is that we have to always go with visual filters because this application is not for uh, it's, it's only for the uh, the people who are sitting at high level. OK, they want to see the entire high level overview of 
the sales data for those people's this application is. OK, so now let's go back now and then let's see like how we can design this visual filters in uh, in CDS. OK, and then once we create this visual filters in CDS, uh, how what what all configuration things we have to do in WebID as well as in BS. In BS, guys, what I will do like without adding any CSS, uh, without adding any CDS, I can directly create that visual filter. OK, through the local CDS. So that one way that we will see in uh, in BS and in SAP Web ID, yes, uh, in SAP Web ID, what we have an option like you can use the existing CDS from uh, existing annotation from the CDS, and then after that, only small steps, uh, small configuration we have to do from the front end level so that your visual filters can be available for the display purpose. So two ways I will show you in this case. So the compact filters will come in a similar way like the other filters. Uh, compact filters. Uh, the compact filters uh, will come in a similar way that we created using list reports. In list yes, reports. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Add the compact, selection field that that. Uh, yes, yes. Compact filters okay. means like in ALP we call those filters as a compact filters because because in ALP we have a two types of filters here, visual okay. filters and compact filters. But in list report, only one type of filter is there, so there is no compact is and compact visual okay. filters. But the way to get those compact filters is same as list support and value helps uh, same as that list support. Yes, everything is same. There is no change okay. in that. OK. So because for example, like we already have this app. Mm -hmm. OK, one second. So this app is. I had this question uh, that uh, how to, you know, at times how to find the standard apps which are developed on few of the elements. Mm -hmm. But standard apps like, yeah, there is a restriction for that, right? Because if, if that extension is there uh, for for that modification, like uh, like whatever the functionality you want to extend in, in the standard Fury Elements app, if that extension is available and as a part of extension, you can do that change. Then only means the extension is possible. Otherwise, not. Means How let's say like I mean uh, uh, mm -hmm. like uh, it's possible to determine that these few element apps are for premise or cloud. But how do we identify that? Let's say I have a sales order creation app in Hana. Mm -hmm. uh, how do I identify that this is created by a you know uh, few the elements all three style? Okay, Fury, if, if you See, go create, with the... First of all, create, we will not use Fury elements, right? Are we? No, mm -hmm. we can, uh, we can, but in some Wait, cases. Sorry, 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 what? So uh, Fury the first question was that create, uh, will yeah, no, create, el create is not uh, suggestible by SAP, right? No, no, you can, you can also perform uh, CRUD operations yeah, in yeah. this series. That is possible, but that is again, again, like we have to deep dive and it will be like a little bit advanced part. But how do we identify like uh, if I, you know, at times it may happen that if I go on the portal and I need to know that this, this Fury app is mm -hmm. created by created from UI by scratch or we have mm -hmm. used a UI we have used a, from the first look itself rather than uh, running it, but from the you know documentation itself, I get to know that this is created by using few of the elements. OK, OK, like yeah, it, it's very easy to identify like whether it is okay. a freestyle project or a Fury Elements project. And on top of that, also you can check whether this is a standard app or not, because when okay. it when the app is standard, so for standard apps, files are always different little bit because most of the code is written and it is handled through manifest.json file for standard apps, because when you make any change, a code will be updated within a manifest.json file. OK, yeah. and then that code will help you to uh, means that code will modify your app behavior. OK, but when it comes to the the custom apps, like as you said, like whether whether it is a freestyle or Fury elements. See Fury yeah. elements. Yes, like if you have created a CDS, you can go with Fury elements only. But no, no. Uh, actually, my mm -hmm. question was that like, you know what I'm asking is that like uh, I go on the Fury portal, right? 
there is a portal okay. and it can it shows what all apps are available for sales right, and distribution right. for yes. production planning what all apps are available there right, are right. options written that this app is for s4 hana or it is for s4 premise or this right, for cloud right. but how do i know that you know from that portal itself can i get to know that this is developed using fury elements or this is developed using freestyle if i is there a way from that because otherwise what normally we'll have to do is we'll have to you know download that app or set a semantic object run it and then but is there a way yes. that yes maybe like what this, we yes, can do right. like uh, maybe we can just understand with the help of the services because when uh, for example like whether if if that app is developed with the help of fury elements so for sure the yes. service that is required so it will be like underscore cds only right okay. Okay. because all the services won't be like srv yeah, that would yeah, be yeah. like normal o data service a traditional o data service okay so sap would have followed that uh, notion yes. as well yeah yeah because otherwise like you you might have seen like when we register this o data service as a cds so the extension that that will be appended is underscore cds at the end okay, so sap will for also i'm hoping sap or sap is also following that standard because like yeah. we are following it because blindly we create the app it gives us underscore cds we don't remove it sure 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 yeah if we remove that then uh, i i guess like annotations will not work properly in that case yes yes okay, so yeah Okay, so let me go back and then uh, let's go back to the uh, actual CDS and then let's see like how we can add a visual filters in this. So before we add like I, I just wanted to make a few changes in this uh, uh, the main CDS. I don't know like we, we, we were having some couple of issues here, so I don't need this item. So basically we'll create one more column as a month end. Okay. So we'll create one more column month end and, and in that column, like we'll, we'll write a code for concatenation. So we will write a code for concatenation in which that uh, specifically that that column will bring a value as month, month appended with the year. OK, so like month year, month year, one column we will create in the CDS. So now in this case, yes, we already have some CDS. Uh, uh, we already have some CDS functions the string functions that you can use whenever you want to modify a string. OK, so in that case, like in JavaScript, in JavaScript, if you want to do any modification on the string, so string basically string data type will provide a different function. So similarly in CDS also, like whenever you want to, uh, whenever you want to work with the string data, OK, whenever you want to do a modification with the value, you can go with the uh, functions, the standard functions for the CDS, which uh, CDS is providing. So in that, like we will use the two methods in that, like first is the concat and second is the substring. Okay. So before that, let me add all the fields that we need. First of all, like we already have sales, plant, division. Uh, after that, net value is there. Currency is also there. Document date is there. So I guess like uh, so this net value we can we can add a default aggregation in this. Default aggregation like some. So after this document date, OK, so now like we will write a logic for concatenation. So first of all, I'm I'm going to add a case and after the case, Are I'll we, use. Uh... Are we, mm -hmm. I have one small doubt. Why is that uh, default aggregation something in data? Why, what is the default? Okay, one second. Wait, and I'll just remove this. I'll activate this code. Yeah, Nitin, just hold on. Huh? Um, um, just let me activate this for a while. What was the CDS, guys? We like the app name. Or app we created last. It was one second. This this is the series. I guess I I have lot of uh, apps in this common common apps. So I'm, I'm I'm getting confused. So I'll do one thing. I'll create a new year. Okay, one more app I'll create here quickly. New 
project from template. LB underscore. So title we will give it as. Let me copy this CDS name. So sometimes like this web ID, I'm, I'm running it on my local machine. So it is connected like I have added one configuration file and I have maintained the host files and because of that I'm able to connect to this uh, web ID on my machine rather than using remote desktop. OK, let me select this annotation file. Sales order set table type analytical will enable the go button and finish. OK, so this ELP project is created. Let me select and run this once. OK, so let me run this ELP underscore project. OK, so I guess like for uh, this. Uh, one second. Guys. OK, so yeah, now let me add a uh, chart chart as well in this. For adding a chart, you already know like uh, we just need to add that qualifier property inside the settings. So I'll, I'll add that qualifier colon default. Save and reload. OK. So our chart and. OK, our chart and this uh, document both are coming now. Sorry, this table. So uh, Nitin, you were asking me about the default aggregation, right? So default aggregation when we add, can you see like it, it, it just aggregated the total value for this net value field? Oh, can you see this total? Very, yes, yes, yes. Very good. Very good. Yes. It's not very good. Uh, maybe maybe it's if, if possible, like Aman can help you more in this because Aman is exploring more like in this is very good in this. OK. Mm. OK, fine, fine. So yeah, so at least you got it like when we add a default aggregation, it will just give you the total uh, like some total some value for this net value field. So that is what we have here. OK, OK. So after this now, yeah, so let me add now code for. Yes, let's add a code for that concatenation because I'm just going to create one more column in this. OK, so we will create that one more column, so we add that. So I'm just adding a case. If case. Substring. So first of all, I will tell you like what is VH? So we, we have we already have this document date, right? So in this document date. When we activate this document date and then when we run this. OK, so in document date guys, can you see like at this start we have the year? So this year I will just uh, like I will uh, I will split this year uh, with from this date and and in front of this year, I will just append a month name. So uh, initial three letters of month and an, an year. So both will be concatenated and it will be added within a extra column. So we'll add one more column here and within that column we will display 
uh, we will display the document date as a combination of year and month. OK, so for that, it's two year. So after that, I'll just give comma. So I'll add a case. Substring. Now we already have VH dot A U D E T. Comma pi comma two. OK, so we, we just added. VH dot A U D E T phi comma two. So now we just need a string OK from this. So the string means first of all what we are checking from here. Like if you look at the output, so basically like always the string will start from zero, right? So if you look at the fifth number, like let's consider two is at zero. Uh, zero is at one. This is like two, three, four and five. So I, I just need a month number here, five. So I, wa I want to start from five till two. After the five, I just needed two values. So that's why I've just added a five comma two. So when I added a five comma two, it will just get the uh, it will just get the month number from that. OK, once we get the month number, so then we will add a condition of one. If it is zero one, what we will do, then we will concat. We will do, we will do the concat and in the concat we will pass January hyphen and after that, after that what we want to concat, we want to concat year because you can see like in document date we have the year. So now how we can get the year? So for that again we have to use substring. So this substring will get a part of the string from that. Th dot a u d a t. After that, what we have to pass? Give comma, and then we need one comma four. Right? We need a one comma four. So in JavaScript, index number it, it generally start from zero. But in case of like CDS, the functions that you use, it always start from one. So remember that one difference. If you are a front end developer, so you, you, you can get confused here. So I'm adding one more now. Zero two. So second is like. Big hyphen. Then you can just. So I guess we can copy paste this, right? Okay, so what we need like three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11. And after that, finally we need a 12. So January, Fape, so that March, April, May. June. OK, fine now. So we, we just added this and after that at the end, what we need to add? At the end, if nothing is there, then we'll just do else dummy. And we have to end as so I'm, I'm just going to give uh, a name for this column as month underscore year. That's it. OK, so this is my column name. So I'll, I'll activate this. So now when I run the output for this. Can you see now at the end? You can see right the month. So month what happened? So in this column month underscore year, we have concatenated the month name 
followed by the year name. OK, that's what we did. So how that is being achieved? It is it is achieved with the help of the substring and the concat. OK. OK, after this, now let's add this column because I wanted to display this column. So to display this column. Yeah, you can you can go ahead. You can just copy this once and we can add this here. We can pass month underscore year. OK, so this month underscore year I have added. That's OK, so this we don't need. And I'll remove that. Yes. So here like position we need as three. And add it as nine. Okay, if you reload this app. OK, so we have this. Uh, we have this. Uh, sorry. We have this column, but uh, if you look at the text, the text of for this column is not looking good, right? It is coming month underscore year. So how we can update the column name here? What should be the annotation for this? You can add end user text dot label, and here you can specify month year. OK, once you specify this. Now let me activate and after that you can just reload this once. Now can you see the text here? Text of the column. So it got changed. How it got changed? It got changed with the help of end user text dot label colon month year. So you can change any text explicitly. There is also possible. You can also change this text for a selection field for a filter. Because when it comes to the filters, let's say if you are making this as a selection, like in this case, in this case, can you see like month year we have all we have already added it as a compact filter. So for this compact filter as well, this text is getting changed. OK, so it is getting changed because of that annotation that end user text dot label annotations. OK, so now let's add a visual filter here. So to add a visual filter as we know visual filter, it is a part of chart because at the end these are like uh, at the end you are displaying chart only and then what all types of uh, charts or the uh, means visual filter generally it supports uh, three types in the in this like first is a line bar and donut. So all these three different charts you it's possible to create a vi visual filter. OK. So you can create a visual filters of three types here donut bar and line chart. So to add a to add a chart here to create a chart for visual filters. So we already have this annotation at the rate UI dot chart. So we, we will use this annotation as it is and then we also need a presentation variant for that. OK, so to add a chart here, so I'll copy. No, I, I, I will not copy, so I'll directly give a comma and I'll add one more annotation here. OK, so I'll add a one more configuration. So for basically for this. Uh, and I'll add this for the visual filters now. OK, so first of all we need a qualifier. So qualifier will give it as a visual. Date. So that is the qualifier for that. Then I'm adding. Chart type, so chart type we will specify it as a bar here. After that, you can add a description. So like. Sales data. Then you can add a dimension. So dimension you can just add. Sorry. It's dimension in dimension you can you can pass month here. So this month here the, the field that we created. We have just added it as a dimension. After that, you can specify measures. In measures, you can pass net value. That also we have to pass it inside the array. Because multiple dimensions are measures you can pass at the same time. So. OK, so after that we need dimension. 
attributes. Uh, dimension. Again, so. OK, so here, first of all, we need to add a dimension. So what is the dimension? It is month underscore year. Give comma and then you can add a role for this dimension. So role for this dimension would be series. OK, similarly, after that you can also add a measure attributes. For that, again, we need to add measure. And in measure, you can pass. What is the measure that we have added? Net value. Give comma and role we have to add. Role you can add access one. That's it. So this is a standard properties for adding a visual filters. OK, so after adding uh, one more chart within this chart annotation, next we have to add a presentation variant for that. OK, so to add a presentation variant, we already know like this. This much part of code it always remain the same. So I'm just copying it. And I'll give comma and I'll paste it here. Now here I'll add it as visual. Visual filter. Default. I don't have to add a default here. Filter for date. And then so like qualifier we have added after that we need a visualization in which type is it will remain the same AS chart. And in qualifier, only the qualifier will change. So the qualifier that we have specified on the top for the visual filter, that qualifier we have to add it here. That's it. Now just activate this code once. OK, so once it is activated, so let's go back. And let me reload it. OK, so can you see visual filters here, guys? Can you see visual filters? It's coming, right? Is it coming? No, no, no. So where it is? It should come right on the top. In manifest, it will change, right? Default, uh, I think, is it? In manifest, no, no, no. we didn't change, no? OK, so for for making this visual filter enable in uh, Web ID, basically in Web ID, like we needs we need to add some local annotations. OK, so we'll add that now. So first of all, go to your annotation folder. So there will be one annotations folder in Web app, and inside that we have this annotations.xml file. OK, so this is this file. When you open, it will open annotation modeler. OK, so this is your annotation modeler in which you can see the list of local annotation and the list of external annotation. So this external annotations are coming from CDS file. And local annotation means the annotations that you can add it in a front end. OK, so all these are like uh, local annotations. So first of all, let's add a local annotation. here. So to add a local annotation, first of all, we just have to click on select targets. OK, so as I said, visual filter, it is a part of uh, it is a part of compact filter. So compact filter means it, it is like a value help only. OK, so in this. First of all, let's expand this sales order set type. OK, can you see this entity type under the entity type? We have this entity type. So just expand this and just expand properties. And after that, so for which property we need to we need to add this visual filter like whatever the property you specify in dimension. So in dimension we have specified month year. So for this property only I need that visual filter. So I'm just going to select that and press OK. OK, so once you add that property, next step is click on plus here. So now we need to add a value help. So now just search for value list. So now we need to add a value list for that. OK, so this is the second step. So first we need to add that property and second step we need to add a value list. Click uh, select that value list. Press OK. So once you add a value list, 
So within a value list, you can see like two uh, properties here, collection path and parameters. So first of all, we will specify collection path. So to specify a collection path. So what is the collection path? Collection path means it is like we have to specify an entity set name which will bring all the properties. OK, all the different properties which are available in the part of that uh, entity set. So for example, when we go back here, like in the main CDS, this is a main CDS. If you can see like we have added an entity set name for that. But let's say if you if you haven't created any entity set name, so there is no entity set name uh, means it, it's missing or you didn't provide. It. So what you need to add, you you just need to copy paste this CDS name and you have to paste that there. But now as we have created a, a entity set name, so this annotation is added for the entity set name. So just copy that entity set name and go back again. Now here just paste that in inside the collection path. And then once you paste, just hit enter. OK, once you enter automatically, this will be reflected in this key information column for that common dot value list. OK, so this will be your third step. So what is the first step? First step, select target, expand this entity set name. After that, uh, like whatever property you have added inside the dimension. So that for that property, just select that property and press OK. OK. After that, after that, just click on plus and then you need to add a value list. Value list annotation we need to add. And inside the value list, we have the collection path. So for the collection path, we have to add that entity set name. That's it. So next, now fourth step is, so for this value list, so there is one plus icon here. OK, so for this common dot value list, after the collection path, there is a plus icon here. Just click on that plus and, and then we need to add this presentation variant qualifier. OK, so now we need to add a presentation variant qualifier for that and press OK. So once you add a presentation variant qualifier, so which qualifier we have to specify? So I guess we added one presentation qualifier for visual data, right? For this visual filter. What is that? So this is the this is the qualifier for that visual filter date. So just copy that filter value, qualifier value from the presentation variant and go back. And just paste that here and just hit enter. So once you enter, so this will be updated and now just click on save. That's it. Now go back to your sales order details and just reload it. Can you see now? OK, so visual filter, is it coming? But the problem is here. Uh, see this uh, this web ID. It is it is a little bit old. It doesn't support like some rendering is not happening properly in web ID. OK, because of the library issues, it is not displaying properly. But if I change if I change that chart type, OK, in, as of now we have specified it as a bar. But let's say if I specify it as a donut. OK, so let me specify it as a donut. And just activate this. And let me reload now. Can you see now? See, it's it's like a rendering issue. It's it's uh, some libraries are not properly working because the way it is rendering for the graph below. Oh, sorry, for the chart, the same colors are not reflecting here for this visual filter. But the same if I if I run in BS. But in BS, uh, I'm also still exploring like, but I can add this from the scratch if you want. But in BS, like we have to do it from the scratch. Uh, like I will not add any annotation in, in the CDS. That entire visual filter I can create as it is in the BS. OK, but so far at least you know like how we created this visual filter in WebID. What we did so far, first of all, we need to add this chart annotation. Second, we need to add a presentation variant for that. OK, so after this, go back, go back to your web ID. So first of all, click on this select target. No, not select target. First of all, go to your annotation folder. Open annotation.xml file. After that, click on this select targets and then expand your entity set name. Under that, we will have all the properties. 
and under the properties, you can select a column that we have specified inside the dimension. So that is month year. I'm just selecting that. Press OK. OK, after that, second step is we need to click on this uh, plus icon here. Sorry, we, we need to click on this month year plus. And after that, we need to add a value list. OK, so once we add a value list, then we have to specify collection path, which is nothing but your entity set name. And then again for the value list, once you click on plus, then we need to add a presentation variant qualifier for that. OK, so once you add a presentation variant qualifier, so in that presentation variant qualifier, whatever the annotation or the sorry, the qualifier that you have maintained for this visual filter, so that same annotation you can use. OK, so you can same like you can create a different visual filters depending on the chart type and your visual filters will be available within that header section for that. So now let me show you uh, in case of BS now. So in BS, first of all, first of all, I have to create one more project. OK, guys, just hold on like I'll create a new. I guess uh, I guess we already have right. Uh, let me check the project. Wait. Okay, this was the I guess this is only the right annotation. Z test. C underscore ALP underscore TR. Yeah, this is the right one. Let me preview this app once. OK, can you see now? Guys. Now tell me what is the difference? Uh, see, first of all, the anode, the chart that you're able to see. How it is coming? I'm also confused now here because we didn't add it. It, it, it is right. OK, so I will tell you. So first of all, you can see the all the columns here, right for the chart. So let me go back here and let me close this. So let me open this annotation.xml file. See, I have already added this because I was doing some uh, some small changes. So that's why you are able to see this chart here, visual filter here. OK, that's why it is coming, guys. It's, it's not coming like without adding any code in, in local and, and directly it's getting up here. It will not work because the same way like in Web ID, we have added this annotation and after that our visual filter was coming. But in case of BS, I will show you that how from the scratch you can add this. OK, so let me go back here. So for basically this, whenever you're adding a local annotation, it will always update your annotation.xml file. So this is a XML code of annotation. So let me delete this code as it is. And I'll show you from the scratch here. OK, so I'm just going to delete this. That's it. And now once it reloads, you won't see visual filter there. OK. And now here also like in. Uh, OK, so you can see the chart and you can also see the table, but you can't see the visual filter. So first of all, the code that we have added here. So this code, this piece of code, uh, let me comment it once. Or or, or best way is like I'll create, open one notepad file. I'll do the control X and I'll paste here. OK, and same I'll do it for the presentation variant. And I'll add it here. OK, so let me activate this. So we already know like we have updated this, so it, it should not 
it should not be visible like in case of web id as well right because in web id it should not display okay so as we deleted that cds code we removed that cds code for visual filter so that's why the visual filter is not visible now it is not coming in web id okay so now let's go back to the bs and then now let's see how we can add that visual filter here so to add a visual filter first of all in bs so bs is totally different from web id so this is your project z a l p underscore project so just right click on project here and there will be one option open guided development can you see this option open guided development so this is the option which we have to choose so click on that op option so once you open so it will open a guided development tool for you and in this tool it will provide you all the list of annotations that are possible for list report and for object page analytical list page and work list page okay so all this annotations will be available here okay so now we want to add a what we want to add we want to add a visual filter here so to add a visual filter as we know visual filter it is a part of alp right so let's see uh, let's scroll down and let's see the list of annotations that we have for list page so this is our analytical list page so can you see the second option here add a new visual filter okay so this is what the annotation we want to add so just click on the just click on this add a new visual filter option so once you choose so in bs like we have a basic tutorial or, or or guide which can help you to add that annotation locally on this Abhi, i'm not i was not getting this guided development in my bs somehow i right clicked on the the web app mm -hmm. you're and, not getting it uh, no it wasn't showing you under few the tools uh, if you right click uh, mm -hmm. yeah wait wait I'll, I'll do that once again so see this is the project yeah right click and I'm scrolling down. At the last, we have oh, okay. open guided development. Is it there? Okay. okay, I'll check while login. I didn't scroll down. Maybe that's why I didn't find it. I was right. If you right click on the web app folder. No, no, no. Web app. Yes, web app also, I guess you can get it. See? Okay, okay. Okay, I, I didn't scroll. That means. Yeah, so it, it's at the last. But let's say if you if you don't want to do that, so you can go to view. So on the top, you can go to view, find command, and here you can also type like. Uh, okay. Can you see this uh, open guided development fury? OK, 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 so if you choose again, it will. So now it will ask you like for which app you want to do that. So I want to do that for Z ELP underscore project. So this is the project for that. So just select that project. After that, it will bring all the options. So same page, it will open. OK. Yeah, so let's scroll down for ELP and now let's add this visual filter. So let me click on this add a new visual filter. So here you can now you can just add a new visual filter. So to add a new visual filter. So guys, you can see like they have provided a preview, a sample preview that how like how many visual filters you can add a small, uh, a basic example they have they have uh, provided you in this preview. So now let's add a visual filter. So to add that, they already have two options here. Like you can directly close this guide or you can start a guide or explicitly you can manually also go like you can click on step one, step two and step three based on your based on your need. So I'm just going with the start guide. OK, so when I go with the start guide, it will tell you like first of all, you need to add a chart related annotations. OK, so it's asking you to add a chart annotation. So to add that, let's scroll down and first of all, it's telling us to select the entity type. So select the entity type as sales order set. Just scroll down and after that, for that sales order set, we need to add a chart parameters. So as we know, like whatever the annotations that we used to add, like for the chart, qualifier, chart type, dimension, measures, all these same properties are available in that. OK, so first of all, I'm just going to add a start a chart qualifier. So I'll add will a visual. This, will this add it as an external annotation or the local annotation? It, it, it is a local annotation. OK, the way we did via code, 
that gets added as external annotation, right? Yes, yes. And this so will, it, but if, if will it not overwrite, overwrite like others? No, 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 no. It it won't. Like okay. so, this is a visual visual filter, right? So for the visual filter, yes, for BS, like uh, the process that we have identified in WebID. In WebID, what we did, like uh, half of the code was done through the CDS, and half of the code we added from the from the front end. So that is a local annotation we added. But that way, I didn't. I didn't identify. I I didn't get it from the BS. So I'm also still exploring in that. Okay. But yes, you. Uh, so I'm just showing you from the uh, from the scratch, like without adding any CDS, how you can create a new visual filter locally in BS. Okay. So let me so add a chart. Otherwise, it normally uh, like. Uh... If you do mm -hmm. it via CDS, uh, you did it via CDS in WebID, it will show as external annotation. If you now go to WebID and you the mm -hmm. way you are doing it now, you can add a filter there as local annotation also, right? Yes. But yes. will the two both override each other? Uh, if you add one visual filter as CDS, one as local annotation. Yeah, see, basically like, uh, okay, I'll, I'll tell you. Like whenever you are adding an external annotation, which are nothing but like uh, that code will be maintained in your CDS file. Right, right. So this code will be over override by the local annotation always. Like if, if the same CDS, if I'm adding it from the front end, so mm -hmm. whatever the existing CDS I have added, it will be overrided by the local annotations. So it will override all. So if, even if you had like uh, in local annotation, you added only, you only had one annotation, common dot value list. It will override mm -hmm. all the external annotations or only that particular annotation. Only only that particular annotation. Okay. 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 If, the, if if you have added for that particular property, only that annotation will be overrided. Not okay. All. Let's say I, I write a CDS or UI dot line item for. Uh, Amount, then I add the same UI dot line item in local as well. So then it will override. Or yes. the face it one. Yes, yes. For face it, it always happens because now happens. Uh, by default the face it is created. Okay. Right. So what 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 should be the best practice? Like if you're adding a face it in your uh, CDS, so make sure that you delete this delete from it. the front end. So similarly, okay. like UI dot face it was overriding it. Similarly, common dot value list will start overriding it. Yes. Okay. Yeah, exactly right. OK. Yeah, so let me add a, a filter here. So I'm just going to uh, add a values or I will mention all the values inside the properties for this chart. So first of all, we added a qualifier and after that we specified a title. Sales order data by month. After that chart description, it is optional. Chart title is also optional. You can give a chart type as, let's say you want to create it as a, a donut. Okay, let's let's say like so far we created, we have, we, we were able to achieve it through the bar, but I am just going with the donut ones. After that, you can select a dimension property. So what should be your dimension property? What should be your dimension property here, guys? I guess I'm not able to see that uh, month underscore uh, year, right? That should be visible, but it, it's not coming here. I guess it's updated or not that I'm not sure. Because the same property, it was it was coming here, right? When we added properties. Yeah, second, I guess it is not updated. Okay, let me do one thing. So I have to reload it once. So it won't take like hardly five minutes. Within a five minutes, we can add that uh, annotation. We can create that visual filter from the front end. Okay, so let's hold on like and still it is loading some libraries. Uh, okay. 
So right click open guided development. Now we will select Z ALP underscore project. And let me scroll down to add new visual filters. OK, so that the guide. OK, so now here let me select sales order set type. OK, let me check the properties. God, it's not coming here. Is it activated? Once try activate Navi. Yeah, I guess some problem is there for activating. OK, one second. Yeah, I can see that column here. Yeah, I don't know like why that column is not coming. Still that column is not visible. Uh, can we create a new project or guys what we what we should do? I don't know why this is happening. OK, let me create a new project quickly. So we have and then copy the series. Scroll on premise one. Next. OK, now yeah, next. Let me click on finish. So this is the app. I just want to see the basic local service because in local service, the CDS that we have added. So in this CDS, you should have that month year. OK, you can see that now. So this within this uh, CDS XML file, we have this whatever the CDS we have added so far. Now we just need to check like so that chart property also I will add it here in manifest. So in manifest we need to add that qualifier. OK, so this qualifier is done. Now. Yeah, OK, let me add a, a annotation now quickly. Let's see whether it's coming or not. Okay. So select the project ZLP demo app. OK, 
Okay, now this is a new issue. Okay, it's coming now. Right. Add new visual filters. Let's start. Let me select sales order set type. And now let's see. Okay, now it's coming, guys. Okay, so let me add a visual filter date. Chart title, you can add it as filter by seats. Filter by month year. Uh, you can select a chart type as donut, and then we will select a dimension property as month year, and then measure property as net value. Okay, so just remember, guys, whatever the measures we used to add in CDS. So in the same fashion, I have selected dimension property and measure property. OK, so once you all select now, whatever values we have selected on the top based on that, some annotation code will be updated within this. You can see right below code. So like the, the title which I have added, the qualifier which I have added, all it is coming from the top. OK, whatever you specify, it will be updated within this snippet code snippet. And now we need to add this code snippet inside the annotation.xml file. And how we can add that? So there is one option insert snippet. OK, so just click on that insert snippet once, not twice. OK, once you click once, it will take some couple of seconds here. And this piece of code, it will be added inside your annotation.xml file. Can you see now? OK. So within an annotation.xml file, this much or this piece of code, it is being added. OK, so how it is will how it will be added? It will be added based on insert snippet option. That's it. So first step like the step one, we added the code. Now let's move to step two or you can just click on next. Now next step is now we need to add a UI presentation variant annotation. So for that, by default, the sales order set type is selected. And now here we have to specify presentation variant qualifier. So you remember, right, uh, guys? Do you remember like we have to? We need a presentation variant and the chart, right? So uh, just going to add a visual present filter date. So this is the qualifier for that, and the chart reference is automatically it will pick like whatever the chart you have added earlier. So what is a chart qualifier? Visual filter date. So same qualifier we have to select from here. Visual. OK, visual filter date. So this is a qualifier. Automatically it will be up. It will be available in the chart reference. So select that. And then once you select, so like we have provided a qualifier for this presentation variant. So it is available on the top. And then this annotation at the rate UI dot chart visual filter date. So this is also available within this annotation path. And now again, click on insert snippet. OK, so it will take some time. So once you click on that insert snippet, so this piece of snippet will be added again inside the annotation dot XML file. OK, can you see? So see, so this piece of code, it is added now here. OK, so this piece of code is for presentation variant. That's it. Now we have to go to next. That is a third step. So for this third step, what we need to add? We need to add a collection path like you remember, like in Web ID, we have added a collection path, right? So the same collection path and parameter that we need to add it in the BS. So how we can add that? So you can add that with the help of. So first of all, we have to provide collection path here. So what should be the collection path? So guys, you, you can you can correlate from here, right? Like instead of adding step one, step two, can't we add directly step three? Because step one and step two, it's already added on the CDS, right? Do you remember like step one and step two? This piece of code was already added in the CDS. We only need a step three, so that is also possible, guys. You can only add that piece of code. OK, so for example, let me add an entity set here. So for step three, I'm selecting sales order set type 
And now we have to select a property as month year here. Same guys, see like first of all, when you go here, first of all, we need to add this month year and that month year it is available inside that sales order entity type. After that, after that we need to add collection path. So collection path is what? Collection path is your sales order. Okay, and then presentation variant qualifier, whatever we have added, it is coming directly. And after that, local data property is your month year and value list property is your month year. That's it. OK, so this piece of code will be appended. Now just click on insert snippet. Just click on that. OK, that's it. So it will update. OK, so this piece of code now it is being added here. That's it. So just click on exit guide. And now let's see the output. Let me reload this app. No, no, I guess we created the new project, right? Yeah, so let me click on this preview app. Okay, ZALP underscore demo underscore app. So let it let us. I guess one second, let me check this uh, cross check this. Filter replace with chart. Okay, in collection path, we have uh, provided. This? Sales order set. OK, now let's check this. OK, can you see now? Guys, can you see our visual filter? OK, so without adding any CDS code, we just created this visual filter from BS and just by adding a local annotation and how you can add that local annotation just by right click on the project and there is an open guided development. So in this open open guided development, you can directly add a new visual filters. And it will help you to add that with the proper description. OK, so now this as we said, this is a visual filter. So if I'm clicking on this Jul uh, July 2018. OK, let me click go here. So because whatever the details will appear in this chart and the table. So as of now, it is displaying month year of May 2018. All the all the month year details are getting displayed. But if I select uh, July 2018, and if I click go. So now it will bring only July 2018 records. See it's it's only it is directly filtering out the uh, the chart and at the same time the table. OK, so that is a, a good feature for the visual filters. And so you can directly click on chart. It has overridden your filters as well, right? Yes, but yes, yes. Added in CBS. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can you see this? What we selected? We selected July 2018. So the same value, it is also been selected in a compact filter. Because what I said, like visual filter, it is a it is a subset of compact filter. It is a part of a compact filters. OK. So I hope this is clear now to uh, by adding a visual filters in this analytical list page. Any questions here? 
So guys, uh, just try it once. Like once you try it, then only it will be more clear. OK, so just try to add a couple of more visual filters here. Like I have just added for the donut, so you can also add accordingly like for uh, line chart and it, uh, for line chart and also for the bar chart. So three filters you can add it here. OK. So we can add a line bar and donut and one for each dimension we can add. Yes, yes, yes. You can go with that. So they can be they can be only one dimension and. Uh, yeah, 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 you can you can add one like, dimension. Like but, here in the chart, you have added series mm -hmm. as well, right? Yes, yes, yes. In chart, we have added the series. Yeah. So, in so just try like, like uh, mm -hmm. whether you can you whether you can go with series or not. Just check that once. OK, OK. OK. Yeah. So just try once like uh, the steps that we followed here in Web ID, like uh, I guess uh, like first and second, like chart annotation and presentation variant annotation, we have added it inside the CDS. And then from Web ID, we just added the third step. Like we have just added the annotation for collection path and value list. I guess the same step you can replicate in, in BS as well. Like can we not see the annotation modeler here? The annotation modeler doesn't come here. No, no, no. The annotation modeler doesn't come here. Okay. And if that I, is if a, I that's if the I problem, just... and then that's why. Mm -hmm. If I just see the yeah, annotation yeah. file that you have added via guided development and manually go on to add the local filter there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Manually that's also you can. Uh, let's say if you want to change that, so that is also possible. You can change and it from here in filter. this values. Yes. So either I add visual filter via CDS or I go via this method. These are the two options. Two, two ways. Yeah, but the the best practice that SAP says that. Most of the CDS, like most of the code, you write it inside the CDS only. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But okay. only that collection piece, you have to write it manually in. Uh, in yeah, yeah, yeah. Field. So collection field, we have just added it manually in, inside this. But I guess like this. Uh, yeah, yeah. I guess this will work. But that is quite strange that half of the, in case of half of the thing that we have to do in CDS and couple of things we have to add manually in. You know, in Web IDE. Just I will do one change, a slight change. Like so I've commented if, the top code. What if if uh, I add it via filter via CDS, but and I use that CDS in in BAS? How will I add that collection piece then? That collection piece only. I'm I'm just adding it now because like this is the third piece code, right? Uh, for val uh, collection path and value list, right? Mm -hmm. So I've just kept this ah, okay. as it is. Mm -hmm. And now okay. I commented the top code, like the basic chart code and presentation code. So now we will mm -hmm. add this from uh, now, uh, whatever the code we have it in inside the CDS. I'll just add it here. Ah, OK. Let me add that. Uh, so that. Me add this piece of code. Let me activate this. Wait, wait, wait. Before I, yeah, let's activate this. And I guess this is the or yeah, I can just like presentation variant, right? So this is the presentation variant, and uh, I have to do one more change. You know, I guess that is enough. Yeah, visual present filter date. So this one I will add it here. That's it. Now let's activate this. So here. See, is it working? So we just added the third step. Only third step code we added, and rest two code, two piece of code. It's coming from the CDS, right? So that means either it is. That means uh, both. Either you could visual filter by CDS or 
by writing BS, but yes. even if you create by CDS, you still have to add that piece of code. Yes, yes, you still have to add that piece of code. But uh, maybe I, I I will check once like without adding any piece of code in in, in front end, it's it's possible or not. Uh, I just have to check yeah. once. Okay, I'll so check it's that. Like, uh, it's again like two step. Uh, half half you're doing in CDS and half in uh, web IDE yeah. or BAS, right? Yes, yes, but I guess yeah, there is one more way. Like, um, uh, you remember, like we uh, we used to add a consumption filter. So within that consumption, also you can add this visual filter. So I'll check that piece of code once. If I have, I'll share with you, Aman, once. What that will do? Uh, that will. So that will help you to add directly the visual filter. Oh, from CDS itself. Yes, from the CD. Nothing itself. to be added in BD, uh, web ID. Or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing to add. But uh, 